Hello my friends here at the Free Cat Academy. My name is Flowey and as I told you before, the only way to learning Free Cat or Cat in general is to model. So you have to exercise yourself as much as possible. The next exercise I want you to do is an exercise that I called exercise six for last year's course. But I would say this is the most advanced sketching exercise you should be able to do and then continue with my basic course. It's called a gasket. And as you see on the screen, it's a simple part, but the sketch already contains a lot more constraints and measurements than before when we modeled the flange. So I ask you to do this exercise first on your own, go to my GitHub, download the technical drawing and try it yourself. And after you've completed this or you get stuck, watch the rest of the video. Have fun and let's learn CAD together. So let's model the gasket. I already prepared it in this file here. You see the gasket consists only of a pad and a sketch. Have a close look at the sketch. Looks a little bit more complicated than the previous exercise, but still absolutely doable. Let's start creating a body element and a sketch on the XY plane. Let's have a close look on the technical drawing and we will see we have two holes that are both 10 millimeters in diameter. And it might be a good strategy to choose the sketch's origin point as a center point for one of those holds. So we start with two circles, first circle here, second circle somewhere up here. These center points are 80 millimeters apart in vertical distance. After doing that, we get a good idea about the general modeling scale of this part. And both are equal in size, select both, equality, and give a diameter of 10 millimeters. So Next thing we need to do is the outline. There should be a different strategy is to create the outline. You could use the trim command and uh, a rectangle and uh, other options and the trimming. I will do it my favorite way. And that's, as you might know, the polyline tool. So polyline, we start with a straight line somewhere here. Go to the right. M, M, M on the keyboard and go into a nice arc until we are something like this here. Continue until here, M, 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 another arc, M, 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 another arc until we are almost horizontal here, here. MMM. Let's get into a pretty nice vertical line. MMM and MMM to finish the outline. All we are missing is one tangent constraint here between the last arc and this straight line. So tangent constraint between here and there. Okay. So first thing, this is a little bit off. We need to set the vertical and horizontal constraints. So this line, first thing we do is to set it vertical and this line, we set it horizontal. Now we set the coincident constraint between the arc here on the upper side and this hole and this arc and this hole. And now we already get a nice feeling about the general scale of the model. We see in the technical drawing that both arcs here have a radius of 10 millimeters. We can select them both and give a radius of 10 millimeters. We now see that the general scale in vertical distance between this line and this line is 72 millimeters. So simply select two points here on the line, vertical distance 72. Then we see in the technical drawing that the general scale in horizontal distance between this line here and this center point is 86 millimeters. We also see in the technical drawing that this arc and this arc are 
12 millimeters. This radius here is 16 millimeters. And the angle between this line and this line is 98 millimeters. For each constraint that we set, the geometry looks more and more like the technical drawing. We have a vertical distance between this line and this center point, but this line has to be located a little bit upper than this hole, so we drag and drop it a little bit to the up here, and then we select the vertical distance between the line and the hole here of four millimeter. We're almost there. We have one degree of freedom left. We can use the degree of freedom tool here in the toolbar. Select unconstrained degrees of freedom. That will select us the geometrical elements that are not yet constrained. So we select it. Ah, and we see this radius here is not yet defined. Very helpful. So we define this radius to be 16 millimeters. So you see that's the general outline and the two holes in the geometry. We could close it and create the pad command here, two millimeters. All we are missing is the inside, so the hole on the inside. So we delete the pad, but we created a valid sketch, what we just checked. And now in the FreeCAD 0.20, we could use the rounded rectangle here, or we could use a standard rectangle, or we could do it with a polyline. We have created the outline with a polyline, so I suggest let's just try it with a regular rectangle. The inside structure here, and we have a nice rectangle. This line should not be vertical, so we delete this vertical constraint, and instead of that we set these two lines to be parallel. Now we should make the fillets on each corner this time I select the constraint preserving sketch fillet and fillet all the corners. Has one advantage instead of using the already predefined rounded rectangle, we can set all radiuses here of the rectangle individually and don't have to delete the equality constraints for the corners. So next thing, this radius is 12 millimeters which you can read in the technical drawing. And the radius here on the bottom right is 24 millimeters, also present in the technical drawing. Now the outline here is jumping around a little bit, so let's just fix it by dragging. Let's set coincident constraints between the center points of this and this arc, and this and this arc. Now we have two degrees of freedom left, which comes in very handy because now all we need to set is the distance between this point and this line to be six millimeters. And the same applies to this point here and this line here, the outline, also six millimeters. So now we've used all the measurements that were present in the technical drawing. You can clean this a little bit up here so it looks a little less chaotic. And we can close the sketch, create the pad again, two millimeters, and the gasket is finished. So a little summary for this part. Let's have a look at the sketch. Choose the position wisely for the sketch. You don't have really symmetry here in the sketch, so it could be a very good idea to use the center point for one of these two circles to be the center point of the sketch. That's what I did here. Then I created the outline first using the polyline tool. And before I did anything else, I made sure that I have a fully constrained sketch. And after I achieved that, I did the rest of the sketch. So the inner contour here. That's it. I hope you were successful doing this exercise. Let me know in the comments how hard was it for you. Have a great time and see you in the next episode of my basic course.